Guy, can you come out from under the bed so we can have a talk? How come you can't look at me? Did you eat the entire loaf of bread before I was able to meal prep? Sky? <laughs> what is this? Did you eat my bread? I need this for the meal prep. I need to make the French toast casserole. Sky. Sky, look at me. Hey. Sky. <laughs> That's a lot of carbs, girl. I'll be back. I gotta go get some more bread. It's a journey for life and I'm your right. Hang on. We'll be long gone. Hang on. Hi everyone, it's Christy. Welcome to another meal prep video. I got more bread. So breakfast is saved. I have more bread. My husband actually went and got it for me. So for breakfast prep this week, I needed that bread because that is basically the bulk of my breakfast. I'm making a pumpkin spice French toast casserole. And to add a little bit of protein to that, I'm going to pair it with some good culture cottage cheese. For lunch prep, it's going to be a slow cooker salsa chicken. And this one is so good and could possibly be zero points on Weight Watchers. And I have a couple dinner kits to put together. So the recipes I chose this week for breakfast and lunch, I think are going to be low point for the new WW Weight Watchers program. So let me start by saying today is Sunday, November 13th. By the time you get this, it's probably going to be maybe a week later. Usually my videos are about a week out. So tomorrow, November 14th, our Weight Watcher apps are supposed to update we're supposed to get some new zero point foods. So the points I'm sharing with you today are as of November 13th, the day before our apps update. But I think that the points are gonna be fairly similar, but I will link all the recipes down in the description box below, and then you'll be able to go to that recipe. And then from there, you'll either be able to see what the points are or click the link to get to Weight Watchers and it'll let you know from there what the points are. If you are new here, you're gonna see me making six breakfasts and six lunches. I'm doing three for me and three for my husband. We just do three days throughout the week and then we do something different the rest of the week. And I wanna mention one more thing. I am gonna be doing the meal prep different. So I'm going to actually be starting with the lunch since it's a slow cooker. I'm going to get that going. Then I'm going to move on to the breakfast and prepping that, getting that in my fridge. So I'm going to be doing things all over the place. But for the purposes of the video, I piece them back together. So in my earlier videos, I used to just show the whole process of how I go all over the place. And a lot of people requested that I just do the recipes together. So if there's just one recipe they wanted, then they didn't have to jump all over the place. So for purposes of the video, I'm gonna be having the breakfast and then the lunch and then the dinner kits. So now that we got that long intro out of the way and I have a new loaf of bread, let's get started with this meal prep. And my meal plan for breakfast this week is pumpkin spice French toast casserole. And I believe this is the same one that I did a few years back. You can't really tell in this picture because it's printed black and white, but this is a recipe I found from thepounddropper.com. I keep calling it pounddropper.com, but it's actually thepounddropper.com. On her website, there is a link to Weight Watchers, so I just clicked that and it said it was between three and six personal points. So I'm assuming with the new program, with the eggs being zero, it's gonna be three points for this. So for this one, we do need 12 slices of one point bread. She says she uses Sara Lee 45 calorie bread, but I am using the 40 calorie bread that I got from Aldi. So we need 12 slices of those and we need to cut them up into little cubes. So I'll do that in just a minute. The other ingredients we need are eight eggs, also some zero point brown sugar substitute. So she uses the Lacanto's Golden Monk Fruit Sweetener, which is the same one that I use. So we need two tablespoons of that. We also need two cups of unsweetened almond milk, one tablespoon of light butter, a half a cup of pumpkin puree. Make sure it's not the pumpkin pie filling. Make sure it's just the regular pumpkin puree. A quarter cup of sugar-free syrup. I'm using the Mrs. Butterworth sugar-free today. I usually use the Lacanto brand of the syrup as well, but I'm all out of that, so I'm just using the Mrs. Butterworth. And then in here, I have a mixture of two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, 
and a quarter teaspoon of salt. And then I didn't measure it out yet, but we're also gonna need two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So just take the bread and cut it into cubes. And I will tell you, if you have day old bread, it does work better, <laughs> but I'm working with what I have. Once the bread is all cut up, now take a 13 by nine inch casserole dish and spray it with some cooking spray. I've already sprayed it and just spread the bread out on the bottom. Then just kind of even it out. We're going to set that aside. Now in a large bowl, crack eight eggs. All right, and then to the eggs, we're going to put the two cups of unsweetened almond milk, the pumpkin puree, the brown sugar replacement, the two teaspoons of vanilla extract, And then you want to melt the butter, which I've already melted my butter, so go ahead and melt that. Don't melt it to boiling, just melt it. <laughs> and then the cinnamon, nutmeg, and salt, and the syrup. And I forgot to spray this. I've been spraying things before I put my syrup in, so that doesn't stick. And now whisk that up real well until the eggs are completely beaten. All right, after that is completely combined, grab the casserole dish, and now we're just gonna pour that evenly over the top. And I'm just gonna take my whisk and just Kind of push it down a little bit just to make sure all the bread is in the mixture. Now I'm going to cover this with foil and put it in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. So one thing that you could do is prep this the night before. So let's say you meal prep on Sundays. If Saturday night you want to prep this and get it in your fridge overnight, that then you can get a head start on your meal prep. Now one thing you'll notice I did not preheat the oven yet. I'm going to wait and since the casserole has to be in the fridge for at least 30 minutes, probably about 15 minutes before I pull it out of the fridge, I'm going to preheat my oven to 350 degrees. I have some grapes and blueberries here that I'm going to get washed. I'm going to do them separate because the blueberries I'm going to have with the breakfast and then the grapes we'll just have for snacking throughout the week. So for the grapes I'll leave them in this container. These are the best fruit and veggie containers. I've showed these in several videos. So if it's fruit, you leave them open. If it's vegetables, you close them, but they keep things so good, especially like spinach or lettuce. If you use them for that, they work really well for those. So I'm just gonna fill this with some water and some vinegar. So I'll let those sit for about five minutes. And then I'll rinse them real well and let them dry in a paper towel and then I'll do the same thing with the grapes. This has been in my fridge for probably almost an hour now. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees. I'm gonna leave the foil on and put it in the oven for 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna remove the foil and put it in there for anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes longer. So now I'm gonna take some syrup and just put them in these little containers. And I'm just gonna put a little bit, it's not even gonna be, this syrup is 10 calories for two tablespoons. So it's not even going to be any additional points for the amount I'm using. Okay, I want to know how many of you have one of these pot holders. These are so old. I want to say this was my grandmother's. I remember it hanging in her kitchen. And then I think my mother ended up with it, and then now I end up. So how many of you have these? They're the old wooden, wooden ones. All right, so the 20 minutes is up. So now I'm going to remove the foil carefully. And now this is going back in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes. It says 25 to 30 minutes. 
I remember, if I remember correctly, when I made this the first time, it didn't say whether to keep the foil on or not. I think that must have been added. And I want to say I cooked it without the foil the whole entire time for 30 minutes. But I'm following along with what she has in her recipe this time. So I've already done 20 minutes and I'm going to put it back in for between 20 and 30. One thing I forgot to mention in my intro, any of the recipes you see me sharing today will be linked down in the description box below. So you can go down in the description box and then you can get the points from there. And also any of the items that I'm using in my video today, like you'll see me with my meal prep containers and different items that I'm using, I'll have links to Amazon down below. So if you're interested in those, you can go check those out. All right, look at that. So I did do it for the full 30 minutes the second time. So it went 20 minutes with the foil on, 30 minutes with the foil off. I really want it to be a little toasty on the top. So, but I don't want it to be overcooked inside. So now I'm just gonna let that sit and cool for about 10 minutes before I put it in the meal prep containers. Okay, this has been sitting for about 10 minutes. So now I'm just gonna cut it into six portions. Oh, look at that. This is definitely, I am pretty sure this is the one I made before and it was so good. And that is a pretty good portion. So I've got my syrup in there and then I put some of those blueberries. I usually use little muffin cups to put the blueberries in, but these little containers worked good. So these little containers here that I'm using, I get these from the Dollar Tree. They have them at 10 for a dollar. They used to, I got them a couple years ago. So both of these. So like I said, I think on the new program, these should still be three points. So, and it's only 131 calories, the way that if you make it according to the recipe. So then I have some blueberries and also some syrup. Now, one thing I do look at with Weight Watchers and because I count calories as well is the calories. So you can have something that's three points be in this case, 131 calories, or you can have something that's three points be more. So because the calories are so low for this breakfast, I do want to bulk it up a little bit. And there's only nine grams of protein in this. So I like my breakfast to have quite a bit of protein. So I'm also gonna have a good culture cottage cheese with this. So for these, there are two points for this whole container or 120 calories, but they pack in 19 grams of fiber. So I'm gonna have these. In the new program, non-fat cottage cheese is zero points. So if you prefer non-fat, I've never really cared for the flavor of non-fat, so I'm gonna have these. So combined, this is gonna be just a five point breakfast and about 250 calories for this whole thing. Now, it's very possible I won't eat all of this in one sitting. I might find that it's just too filling. If that's the case, then I'll just set it aside and eat some of it later. But that's what I'm planning on for our breakfast. All right, for this last one, <laughs> I've got a three compartment container, so I had to kind of cut that in half. All right, I'm sticking a kind of like a review clip in here. It is a few days later and I'm having my breakfast and this was amazing. My husband texted me probably every morning saying, love, love, love this French toast casserole. So you saw there I have my cottage cheese and then the casserole. So the entire breakfast for me was five points, two for the cottage cheese, and it did end up being three points on the new plan for the French toast casserole, zero for my syrup, and then zero for my blueberries. If you're counting calories, it's about 250 calories, and that's for the cottage cheese and the casserole. It's 120 for the cottage cheese and about 131 for the casserole. And then that doesn't include Include the fruit that depends how much you have of that but I will definitely be making this one again all right for lunch we are having slow cooker salsa chicken this is so easy to make and it is so good so I'm gonna get this going because it does cook in the slow cooker so it takes a little bit of time the recipe says six hours, but that really depends on how thick the chicken is. I think I'm going to do probably between four and five hours. I'll check it and see how much it's done. So all we're going to need for this recipe is some salsa, a can of corn, two cans of black beans, 
a can of diced tomatoes. The recipe also calls for Velveeta shreds. I'm not gonna be using that. I may top it with cheese, but I haven't decided yet. So whether you make it with cheese or not is completely up to you. If you don't use the cheese, then more than likely on the new plan, this isn't gonna end up being a zero point recipe. And then I also have two pounds of chicken breast. I've already seasoned my chicken breast. And all I do is season it with salt, pepper, garlic powder, and adobo seasoning. And if you don't have adobo seasoning, I have used Cajun seasoning in this before and it turns out just as good. So the first thing that you want to do is get a strainer or something and take both cans of black beans and also the can of corn and just drain and rinse them real well. Okay, so now you want to take your slow cooker insert. I actually have an instant pot insert because my instant pot has a slow cooker function and spray it with some cooking spray. Then we're just going to dump the corn and black beans in there. And the can of diced tomatoes. And just give those a mix. Now you just wanna layer the chicken over the top. So one thing with this recipe, you can shred the chicken after if you want. I don't usually shred it. I usually just leave the chicken whole and just put it right in our meal prep containers. So my chicken breasts are not very thick, so I'm definitely gonna just do it probably for like four hours. So once the chicken breast on there, now we're going to take the two cups of salsa and just pour that right over the top. And that's all there is to that. Now we're just going to take it over, put it in the slow cooker. And then I'm going to do slow cook. So I'm going to put it for five hours, but I'm going to check it after about four and a half. So it's been a little over four hours. I did check it a little bit ago and it looked like it was almost done. It's hard to tell the ones that has the salsa on it. So I actually cut into one and decided to just let it go a few more minutes. So I'm gonna pull the chicken out and then that way I can kind of use a slotted spoon and pull the corn and beans out into the meal prep container and then that way I can just set the chicken on top of that. And same situation, I have one with a three compartment. I actually have more of these. I think I have eight of these and then the single cart compartment and the double compartment, I only have five and those are the ones I use most. But I can't get myself to buy an extra set just because I need one more. All right, so I'm just gonna take a slotted spoon and do the best I can. <laughs> All right, and then now I'm just gonna take some of that juice and just kind of pour it over the top of the chicken. Because a lot of that is the salsa, and I definitely don't wanna lose that salsa flavor. Okay, I put all that juice in there. It's almost like a chicken taco chili, if you think about it. So the recipe actually includes one and a half cups of cheese. And on that recipe, I was using Velveeta shreds at the time. So I think it was one point worth, but I think without the cheese, it's gonna be zero points. I'm gonna just not put any cheese. I was gonna use some reduced fat Mexican, but I think I'm just gonna leave it the way it is. If we wanna add cheese or sour cream or anything, sour cream would be really good to kind of mix in. It would make it a little bit more creamier if you want that. But I think I'm just gonna leave it the way it is and then I'll decide if I wanna put things on it the day that we have it. So with the cheese, which was a quarter of a cup of cheese per serving, it would have been 371 calories and two points. So I'm thinking without the cheese, I'm trying to see if there would be anything in here that would be points. 
I think on the new program it's going to be zero. I probably will top mine with some avocado though. I have some avocado that I bought, so I'll probably add a little bit of avocado to mine. If you want to add cilantro, you can. My husband cannot stand cilantro. I love cilantro, but I didn't get any. I didn't even think to get any for this. So lots of different options you can do. So like I said, two points and 371 calories, but that's with a quarter cup of Velveeta Shred. So I want to say those are like maybe 30 calories for a quarter cup. So it's still going to be about 350 calories, but as far as points, this should be zero, maybe one point. So the salsa chicken, again, another amazing one. And I did verify that it, this is zero points on the new Weight Watchers plan. So I did not end up using any cheese, so zero points and 311 calories. And then I'm going to add some avocado to mine, but I do want to show you, let me turn my scale on here. Let me show you why I weigh out my avocado. So let me get it out of here. So I have, I've cut it in half, so it's like a quarter. I'm trying to do this with one hand because I'm, I'm holding my phone. So let's just squeeze it in there. So a quarter of an avocado, a quarter of a medium avocado, this is probably a medium, is two points if you just look it up. But if you were to actually weigh this, twenty-one grams. You can have thirty-five grams for one point. So that is exactly why I weigh out my avocado. And actually I'm pretty sure I think it's thirty-six grams that you can have. Okay, so I'm at 36, 35, 36, it keeps toggling, and that's what I have left of the half. So for this whole thing, it's one point on Weight Watchers with the avocado, and then for the calories, it's 311 for the salsa chicken, and then 58 calories for the avocado. And the best thing I love about this recipe, honestly, is just how easy it is to make. All right, for my dinner kits this week, so if you're new to my channel, I do like kind of like DIY dinner kits. Basically what I'm doing is just taking, uh, these are re reusable bags. I don't think they sell these bags on Amazon anymore, but I'll link them and usually you can find something similar. So basically what I do is just write on here what's in it and I put all the ingredients into the bag. Just makes it easier when I get home from work to just pull the bag out of my fridge and put it together based on the kit. So I use Home Chef meal delivery kits quite often. Um, if there's something I see on there coming up for a week that looks really good, then I might order Home Chef. Or if I'm just really busy on the weekend and I only have time to prep breakfast and lunch, then a lot of times I'll get uh, Home Chef. So what I usually do is when I get Home Chef, I keep their containers and that way I can use it for my own DIY ones. So let me show you the two kits that I'm putting together this week. I do have one recipe which is the bourbon glazed salmon and I don't think I'm gonna put that one together in a kit that one's pretty easy to just throw together so I'll just I'm not gonna put that into a kit so I have just two I have the turkey stuffed pizza peppers which I don't quite have the recipe done hopefully by the time this goes up I'll have the recipe link down in the description box and then I'm doing a skinny taste recipe for pork chops with mushrooms and shallots so I'm just gonna show you real quick what I've done to put the kit together this is turkey stuffed pizza peppers I think they're going to be 11 points. So if you watch my meal plan video, I wanted to get turkey breast, the 99% lean turkey breast, but they didn't have any, so I had to get the 93%. So if you have the turkey breast, then it, I believe it's going to bring your points down to about six. For my dinners, I usually like those right around 10, 12 points anyway. And I think it's going to be somewhere around 450 calories. And again, I'm taking a guess at that. So let me show you what I have in this kit. I have three peppers, so you can use whatever kind of peppers you want. There's a yellow pepper, red pepper, and a green pepper. Basically, we're going to cut these in half, and then the filling is going to go on each half. So my husband will get three halves, and I will get three halves. It is quite a bit, so you definitely could cut this down and just do two halves of the pepper if you want. And then I also have here two ounces of mozzarella. So you do need shredded mozzarella, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just wait and leave it in block, and then I'll shred it the night that I have it. 
We also need two ounces of kale. So I just put that on my scale and weighed it, but it's kale, so you don't necessarily need to weigh it. I'm weighing things just for the purposes of calories. So if you're on Weight Watchers, things like vegetables, you really don't need to weigh it. You can just kind of eyeball it. And then I also have one ounce of light cream cheese and also eight ounces of marinara sauce. So toss that all in there. And then I have, this is actually 1.2 pounds of turkey. And again, this is the 93% lean. I'm only gonna need 10 ounces for this recipe, so I'll just put this whole thing in my fridge, and then when I go to make it, I'll weigh it out and save the rest. So I'll just put these in my fridge like this, and then when I go to get home from work, just pull the kit out, everything's ready to go. The other one I'm doing, <laughs> all right, these bags are getting, you can kinda see they're not washing off good. This one is pork chops with mushrooms and shallots. I believe this is going to be five points and about 180 calories. So since it's so low in calories, I am going to serve this over rice or mashed potatoes. And for this one, I'm going to be making enough for two nights. The recipe makes enough for four and I didn't realize that until I had everything together, but that's fine. So in here, I have a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. I also have a teaspoon of light butter. I have one shallot. We need 10 ounces of Baby Bella mushrooms, but all they had was white mushrooms, so I'm just gonna use white, and this is just eight ounces, but that's fine. We also need a cup of chicken broth. You might have seen in my grocery haul, I bought some chicken broth, because I thought, I knew I was getting low of my homemade chicken broth, but I do have two of these left. So I've got this one and one more. So this is just homemade chicken stock that I made. So I pulled this out of my freezer and I'll just let it thaw out in my fridge. I think I'm gonna leave this outside of the bag just so that when it thaws out and gets the condensation, it doesn't get my shallot all saturated. And in case you're wondering, you can probably see it says mozzarella stuffed pork chops on the other side of the bag. That's because that was originally what I was going to have when I first started meal planning. And so I had already wrote it on the bag. So I just left it. I figure maybe I'll have that next week. And then the other thing we need are salt and pepper. I'm not going to put that in there. And the other thing is two tablespoons of fresh parsley, which I don't have. So I won't be using that. And then you'll also need four pork loin chops, so you can either use bone in or boneless, and I'm gonna use boneless for this one. And I'm just gonna put my pork chops in there for now, just for the purposes of the picture at the end, but I do leave my meat out, just so that if it does happen to open from the package, it doesn't seep out all the meat juice all over the food. And then I was gonna put the ingredients for the chimichangas together, but now I'm thinking of doing pizza meatloaf because I still have some marinara left from the marinara for the pizza peppers. So I might just do the pizza meatloaf this week. All right, so I decided to do pizza meatloaf during the week because I think we're gonna do chimichangas tonight. After I get done meal prepping, I think we're gonna make chimichangas. So I'll put both recipes down in the description box. So for this recipe, it's really super easy. I am actually gonna be making three. The recipe on my website has enough for two. Whenever I cook things, I usually like to use maybe around five ounces of meat for each of us. So I need 10 ounces of ground beef and I don't wanna open this package and then have some left. So this is 16 ounces, so I'm just gonna make enough for three, and then one of us can have it for lunch one day or something. So this is 93% lean. If you get the 96% lean, of course, that's gonna lower the points on it. The points the way it is are 10 and 360 calories. So probably what I'm gonna do is just roast up some zucchini and squash that night. I won't put that in the bag right now, but I'll at least get this together. So for the serving of three, I need 12 for the two, so I'm gonna need 18 slices of pepperoni. And I'm just using this turkey pepperoni that I get from Aldi. So double check the pepperoni though for, if you're on Weight Watchers, it's different for this kind versus like the, I think the armor kind, there's different kinds of turkey pepperoni. So I'm just going to chop this up into little bite-sized pieces. And then the other things I have in these containers here, again, enough for three. I have one and a half teaspoons of onion powder or onion salt. No, I think it's onion powder. And then I also have 
The recipe for two calls for a quarter cup of panko breadcrumbs. So I did a quarter cup plus an eighth of a cup. And then it also calls for two ounces of marinara. So I have three ounces of marinara there. And then the other thing that I need is some mozzarella. It calls for sliced mozzarella, so you just put the slices over the top of it. I don't have any slices. So what I'm going to do, I have uh, some of the mozzarella that I used for the other recipe, the block mozzarella. I do have some of that left. It's part skim mozzarella. I think that kind is polio part skim. I can't remember. But I'm just going to slice up some of that and put it over the top that night. So now I'm just going to throw this in here. And again, it's just one less step that I have to do. And let me tell you, this might seem very trivial to some, might seem very petty, but I have to say when I get home from work and all I have to do is pull out a kit and just throw it together, it is so worth the little bit of time that it takes right now. Because this really doesn't take a lot of time. I know a lot of people will be like, why waste your Sunday doing that? But I already have my Sunday planned out for meal prepping, so for me, it makes it easier. But you have to do what works for you for meal prep. I am only sharing with you ideas. That's why it's great to watch a bunch of different channels that do meal prep, because you can kind of take each of their ideas and make it your own. So I'm just going to toss these in there. And then, like I said, I think I'm just going to roast up some zucchini and squash, maybe an onion with those, and that'll be it. So now there's my three nights of dinner kits. For snacks this week, if you saw my meal plan, I have a whole bunch of different options for snacks this week. So I have some hummus here that I can have with the carrots. I've got some Premier Protein. I'll have that sometimes as in, for an afternoon snack. But with, honestly, I probably won't have that this week with all the other options. I've got some uh, cheese wedges here that's kind of like laughing cow cheese. I like to roll those up with a piece of turkey. That's a nice one point snack. It's 30 calories for each, 30 for the turkey and 30 for the wedge. So 60 calories or one point. The hummus, you're gonna have two tablespoons for a point or 70 calories. So lots of different low calorie, low point options. I do have some more cottage cheese in my fridge. I have some kiwi, I've got some bananas, so I've got some PB2 and some pudding. Sometimes I'll mix the two of those together. And then I didn't end up buying carrots. Usually I buy whole carrots and cut them up, but I just got some baby carrots this week. And then my grapes there, I have some cucumbers that I like to either eat those plain or mix them with some Olive Garden light salad dressing. So lots of easy options for snack this week. And then my breakfast, my lunches, and my dinner kits. So I want to wish you and your families a very happy Thanksgiving. And I want to thank you for being a part of my life and for being a part of the Planning Us Healthy family. You all mean the world to me. It makes me so happy to get on here and share ideas with you and have our comments back and forth. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for your friendship and for your support. So let me know in the comments if you're planning on trying one of these recipes. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And thank you all so much. I hope you all have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. I'll see you in my next one.